roll into like a ball or something like that, and then you just go. Welcome to B Movie Mania, the show where we talk about movies that probably aren't all that good, but we like them, and we think that you should probably like them too. My name is Paul Brooks. Who are you? I'm Mike Hayes. And tonight, uh, we got some doozies. And Paul, I will take, not offense, but like, I'm gonna choose to disagree to how you introduced this, sh this episode. Half of it. Because half of the, the things, I think, we don't know yet, but I think we're going to agree that one of these movies is terrible. And we're going to agree that one of these movies is kind of absolutely genius. One of these movies is uh, very near and dear to your heart. Yeah. I think it's uh, probably the closest that you'll ever come in your lifetime to an actual child. And so I'm not going to talk bad about it. But even if, uh, even if I didn't know that you were so fond of this movie, I still wouldn't talk yeah. bad about it. I think you liked it. What's the what's the film that we're talking about here? Where is it? Oh, do should we, we have, just do it? Do we have yeah, it around we got... here somewhere? Surely we. Yeah, 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 yeah. A little something called society. <laughs> oh my goodness! It's a faded cover. Yeah, a little bit. It's one of those. You can tell that it was uh, in in front of a video store, like in the window yeah. for like 15, 20 years. Well, it's a cool. I mean, like imagine this in full color, a nice sexy lady with uh, God knows what's going on with her face there. Like you know, you're gonna check this out. Wow, it's so good. Come on, I swear, I swear it, it'll be just between you and me. Just, just tell me the truth. About what? You know what? The problem with this movie. Not the problem with this movie, but the problem with talking about this movie mm -hmm. is that there are things that happen in this film that are so amazing, it would be borderline criminal to divulge certain things and s spoil it for, mm -hmm. for people. You just have to watch the movie. It's, 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 it's incredibly... It's different. Blanchard. They uh, must have had to do a lot of reconstructive stuff on him. It has a great build to it. It starts one way, and you don't know how it's going. It leaves you with a good teetering kind of suspense going on. It, I felt like, and we talked about this when we took a pee break in the middle of mm -hmm. it, I said, I'm liking it, but I'm wondering if it's going to like take some twists and turns, because right now, it's like this kid, what's his name? Billy. Billy. I, I feel like something's gonna happen. And if I scratch the surface, there'll be something terrible underneath. It is perfectly normal to experience a certain irrational fear in your face. But it's no more than a stage. He's sort of like hallucinating or he's very paranoid mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, is this kid just paranoid or is things really going on? You think that things are probably really going on, mm -hmm. but it's, at some point you're like, I'm going to need this to go in a different direction. It goes in a different <laughs> direction <laughs> yeah. and you're like, okay. Could you zip me up, Billy? But again, there's not a whole lot we can say without completely spoiling it. You don't want to spoil it. No. Some movies we've talked about, I'll tell you exactly what happens at the end. Mm. Who cares? Yeah. This is one where it takes you on a journey and it is just, it's a ride. I, uh, I really enjoyed watching this VHS tape, which we do a lot of on this show. Yeah. But I have to say that I really hope that this comes out on Blu-ray at some point. I would point. love to see a good transfer of this movie. Yeah, because you, you're like, this is so well done and so well put together that, uh, you know, a VHS copy from whatever, 1980, 1989. 
doesn't quite do it justice. So hopefully one of these days, uh, Scream Factor, Scream Factory, or something like that, will yeah. will help us out with that. No, look, Sean. Let. Um. Oh, Billy, how could you? Um, one thing, Mike, that I want to point out about this film mm -hmm. that uh, I, I really picked up on uh, and I really enjoyed, to be honest with you, you and I are both big fans of movies having titular lines. Oh, yes. And, uh, you know, if, if I, I, it makes me feel good if someone has, you know, for instance, the titular line in Star Wars. Someone, or someone maybe has a titular line in, say, I don't know, out of Africa. Something like that. Yeah. Just as an example. Mm -hmm. This film, Society, I felt really good watching this. I felt good for the actors in the film because just about everybody in the film gets a crack mm -hmm. at the titular line. Just about everybody at some point in the film says, you're going to make a wonderful contribution to society. You know, you'll make such a great contribution to society. Now is our newest confirmed member of society. And you have to learn to accept society's rules. Try to tell me about this, about this society. You have to be born in the society. Anything for society. Members of society. 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 Mm -hmm. So you got to feel good for the actors that for, you know, the rest of their lives, uh, uh, Billy Warlock. I could, real How quick. is his name Billy really Warlock? Quick. Is that is that his character's name too, Billy, or was I wrong? Uh, Bill Whitney, yeah. Yeah, so it was, it's Bill, Billy. His real credited name is Billy Warlock. <laughs> How is he not in more movies just because he has an amazing name? The commentary in the movie is real. It was... It's always been true to some extent but even more today it's about it's about the high the high class the you know the the upper echelon of society and how like they can just like they just feed off and suck the life out of the lower classes you know they just go in they just take everything they can and they don't care about everyone else and that's really kind of what it sort of gets into with this paranoia and all this kind of stuff why? why 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 are you guys doing this to me huh don't be so paranoid. Wait. I'm not paranoid. Don't be like that. Come on, Bill. No, calm down. Whether or not it's a justified paranoia, it's still, in the context of the film, a fantastic commentary, I think. Right. And it holds to really rings true these days. It, it really does. I, I would agree with you completely that the social commentary in the film is as relevant today, if not more relevant, than it was when it came out in 1989. I think it is more relevant. Who are you? You almost understand, don't you, Bill? You're a different race from us, a different species, a different class. You're not one of us. So that's a really interesting aspect of it. It's, it's always nice to see a movie that doesn't get dated like that. It still holds mm -hmm. up and it's still relevant as time goes on, you know? Yeah. Mike, this is, uh, this is, this is a, a movie that uh, will have you on the edge of your seat. There are twists and turns. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on with it. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, in your opinion, what would you say you need uh, to have to, in order to watch this movie? What's your survival list for society? Can you help me out with that a little bit? Paul, let me tell you. Mm-hmm. Number one, you need to have a psychologist. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You're gonna need to have a psychological test before you watch this film because you need to make sure you're grounded so that you know everything that's happening around you in in, re, in reality you our, need to make sure yeah you our need to make, reality yes that, that you're not freaking out that you're not going crazy you need to make sure you're grounded first that's a that's a great piece of advice two you're gonna want to go around your home 
most especially if you're watching with other people and you're going to want to make sure all sharp, sharp objects are secured Whoa. and in a safe place yeah. because you don't know, maybe you're grounded, you had the psychological exam like I just recommended, Paul, but what if your friend didn't? They might go up, they might think they're going crazy, they're gonna pull a knife out of the drawer, we don't know what they're gonna do with it. They might hurt someone, they might hurt themselves, we don't know. Right. Number three, you're gonna need a towel. Because... A if, towel? A towel. A towel. Because you know what? If things turn out and there's some sort of a shunting situation that ends up happening, oh, the shunting! You're gonna want to dry off. Yeah, <laughs> I do love the smell of the hunt and the taste of the shunt. <laughs> <laughs> love this movie. Can I just say it? Two hands. I'm not even gonna try, Paul. You know, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna incorporate one of your hands with mine and give it three. Whoa! That's never happened before. Wow. Well, there you have it, uh, folks. Society, check it out. It's like this. <laughs> There's no business like show business. <laughs> Do like we did and go up to that weird video store uh, up uh, up on Clark Street, north of Devon, mm -hmm. where there's that weird guy who can never find the tapes. You go, you're like, I want this tape, and he's. It takes him 20 minutes to find it. Go to that video store, pick up your copy of Society. Do it. Well, let's find out what's going on on the street with our main man, Street Man. What's going on? Guys, that movie sounds like a lot of fun, but I've been up all night thinking about this great flick I saw starring up-and-coming sensation Hugh Grant. The movie's called Nine Months. He plays a child psychologist, which wouldn't help me with the rash that I have, but it does help him work through some really zany situations he gets into with his girlfriend when she gets pregnant. Um, it's got everything. Special effects, and I just, I had to tell the world about it, so get out there and rent it today. My man, thank you so much for that update. You're looking good today. You're feeling good today. Thank you so much. Mike, up next on the show. Ugh. Hey, you know what? No, I like, I, I'm, I'm excited about this. Okay, all right. A little something called the Ironbound Vampire. Concrete for it. And I know what you're thinking to yourself right now. What in the heck are they doing with a DVD? Normally they review VHS tapes. Hey, there's nothing that says, there's no rule that says we can't review movies on DVD. You can go back and watch any of the episodes of B-Movie Mania and try to find somewhere where we say that there's a rule. There is no rule. It's a DVD. We're going to review it. Deal with it. Okay? Listen, if you're gonna have any sort of problem with anything, you might think about the fact that this is not even a B movie, it's a Z movie, 100%. The blood of the green, the lovely Miss Powell. Hello, I'm Tom Ling. You can't be, you're so young. You're very kind. Carl Petri is the director, slash writer, slash probably a million other things involved with this. Uh, um, he produces these movies in like New Jersey, it yeah. seems. Oh, big time. Uh, hence Ironbound, that's a, a neighborhood in New Jersey. Um, and he is a proclaimed psychic. <laughs> and... Uh, Get, makes I don't even know what to even say about it. He makes these movies, and they are just they're they're like home movies. They're b almost to the level of a home movie grade. Long time no see, Detective Steele. Well, I've come as you asked. I hear you're writing a book. Fact or fiction? Does it matter? Well, I tweeted about this movie. Uh -huh. I, li I live tweeted this movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if, if I may, one of, the, one of the things that I had to say about Ironbound Vampire mm -hmm. was 
Need to find out who the cinematographer was on Ironbound Vampire. Beautifully shot in stunning 4x3 on a state-of-the-art 1998 JVC Handycam. <laughs> and it is. I mean, yeah. like, it's just, it looks like garbage. Which is great. For us. <laughs> for us. I mean, this is the sort of thing that I live for in mm -hmm. terms of B-movies, or as you put it, Z-movies. No question. It's... The damn thing opens, excuse me, the darn thing opens with a guy like on a typewriter. <laughs> this is my father, the former Newark, New Jersey police detective, Eric Steele. He's a great detective, but a lousy typist. <laughs> and he's just like typing, but then like his daughter is doing a voiceover <laughs> explaining to us that this is her dad, but we don't know who the daughter is. So who better to tell the story than me? All that would have to happen is she walks into the room with him and goes, hi, dad. Right. That's established everything. <laughs> yeah. Instead, well, yeah, here, here's how the, it should have gone. She walks in. Hi, dad. Hi, honey. I'm working on my novel. That's all you needed to have. Right. Instead, we got a five minute voiceover describing information you don't need. Since Newark is such a large city, a lot of crimes are unsolved. While a cop, my father found a pattern of strange disappearances and deaths in Newark, which went on for years before, during, and after his time on the force. We're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Did we read the back yet? No, we haven't. Let's take care of that. I'll go ahead and do the honors. Please do. Mm -hmm. All right, the Ironbound Vampire, former police officer, uncovers a pattern of strange disappearances and unsolved deaths in and around the Ironbound section of Newark, New Jersey. The crimes all seem to involve a mysterious man named Thomas whose background is shrouded in the occult. Thomas, a soldier during World War I, has been shot in battle and was close to death when he was carried away in the arms of a cloaked stranger. The stranger gives him a new life as one of the undead. Upon Thomas, Thomas's return to America, a bloody plague of death begins to spread. The elusive Thomas and his naked vampire brides cannot be stopped from torturing the innocent townsfolk. A beautiful female vampire killer is out to destroy the bloodsucker and his cult as the list of victims continues to grow. That sounds great. None of that happened in the movie. <laughs> like, okay, I'm glad that. that you said that because I'm reading this and I'm going, huh? No. Did I fall that. asleep? No, none of that happened in the movie. <laughs> that is all. That is all subtext to the movie. Right. Like we get a. Do we even get a flashback of him in World War One? Tom Lane, a local boy who left his home in Newark and the love of his life, Nadia to fight in the Great War of 1918. They mention it, right? They mention that he was, like, was in World War I. And so the wording is what, as soon as he gets back to America, a plague of death happens. <laughs> wherever. And no, we, we jump from just knowing he's been in World War I to 1998. There's nothing in between. <laughs> At night, Tom left the ship. Returning home, that's when the terror began. I got one more paragraph oh, that, that describes... More. Well, it says, The Ironbound Vampire is an ambitious, underground production that has the feel of a modern-day Edward D. Wood Jr. movie mm -hmm. and features special guest appearances by Wood cast veterans Dolores Fuller, Glenn or Glenda, mm -hmm. and Conrad Brooks, Plan 9 from Outer Space. Now, that's true. They're in the film. They are. Uh, but that raises an important question that we were sort of talking about a little bit while, mm -hmm. the, while we were watching the film. And that is, are they purposely trying to make this bad? I, th I say no. I say they're really trying to do this. And much like Ed Wood, this is the best that they could do. Well, I got my dad's beer. And the movie. Cool, hook me up. I have been dying for a beer all day. I think sort of, yes. But not as like, not Sharknado trying to make a bad movie, right? Mm. I think it's like, I think this guy loves bad movies, loves Ed Wood. 
So he is just like, I know I'm gonna do one take. I'm not gonna care that much about this. I'm not gonna care about this. And whatever I, what garbage comes up is what I'm gonna put out. I don't think it's like an intentional, wouldn't it be funny if right. I made it like this bad way. I okay. think he just follows a set of rules and or just doesn't care and just like hammers it out and yeah. then makes this garbage movie. I can see that. I mean, there's a shot on the back here of one of the uh one of the victims or there's like a body or whatever. I mean, they just went to, I have another tweet. I have another tweet about this film because I couldn't handle some of the things that were going on in this film in terms of the uh, practical effects, let's say. So I, I tweeted for horror effects, I think the prop department for Ironbound Vampire went to Party City on like November 2nd and just did the best they could. <laughs> meaning, <laughs> meaning it looks like garbage. Yeah. And it's patently obvious that it's just stuff that they bought from like Party City. something yeah. you know what i mean like it, it it's just it looks like fake toys basically <laughs> and real quick i know there's something we both really need to talk about yeah, for this I movie, know. but real quick <laughs> the main villain thomas uh, didn't he seem like the nicest guy ever hey, hey, Tom! Hey, Tom! Hey, Tom! The Ironbound Vampire. Yeah, the Ironbound Vampire. That, that this this sexy woman just trying to take down. At no point did he do anything wrong, as far as I can remember. No. And just like people attacked him. Detective, I found him over here. Yeah, I found another one over here. Like he wasn't doing anything. He was just minding his own bit. He threw a party and was being real polite to everyone. He was, he bought out some brought out some real fine shandy or whatever it was. Yeah, he's an okay guy. He seemed fine. I very rarely get to entertain. So everybody, please enjoy yourselves. And Ambrose can get you anything your heart desires. Listen, let's talk about what I know you really want to oh, talk. You don't really even care about this movie. The movie was garbage. You it wanna, was fun to watch, but it was garbage. You want to talk about a particular bonus feature that was on this DVD. It's the best bonus feature on any DVD that's ever been made. I'll just read what yeah. it says. There's outtakes and bloopers, which are just people blowing their lines. That's all it is. It's not even funny. And then there's something called Vampire Debate with Johnny Link. <laughs> Well, living, living energy vampires practice, practice uh, uh, feeding on the, uh, the life force. So there's an actor. Johnny Link is named in the Johnny film. Link. He's this weird mustachioed uh, creep. Like, roll a clip. Paul, while you're editing this, roll a clip. Cheese, we have to get the cheese. Yes. Don't forget the cheese. Yes. And the... S speaking of cheese, yes. And Tom wants the scotch. Yes. And don't forget the scotch. Yes, it's be cheese and scotch. He is just a weird, creepy dude who's who's hilarious to watch. We liked him a lot. He oh, was yeah. like our favorite character. Yeah. Here, Tom. Here, Tom. This will make you feel better. So then we start going through these bonus features. Guess what? Johnny Link <laughs> is in a uh, versus match with some sort of some sort of college professor or a scientist or something. Well, but the weird thing is, it starts off as just sort of a let's do an interview yeah. with this actor for be, for the behind the scenes sure. DVD. That's what it seems like at first. That's what it is at first. They're just having a conversation. Yeah. If you, there's if there's no vampires, you can't research them. Yeah. So you must must believe in vampires. Then. Right. Okay. At some point, the host. <laughs> has just had enough with this guy and his absurd... Well, but 
his absurd thing is that he believes in vampires. Yeah. Right. Well, basically, there were two different types of a real vampire. Uh, first, the energy vampire, the undead, those who have risen. Like, <laughs> and and has researched them. Well, and, claims to have yeah, researched By research, I mean he's hung out with a meth addict. He became very aggressive at the new at the time of the new moon. That's another thing. And that, what happened? Did he threaten you? Well, uh, you might say that. <laughs> But the host just can't handle it anymore yeah. and starts like grilling this guy and being like, well, what research have you done? Mm -hmm. Well, I still have to do my research, but I talked to, you know, a friend of my mom's. This is a very extraordinary uh, assertion. Now, do you have any evidence that this is indeed the case, that this is indeed true? Well, I have to do a lot more research w with different people. You know, yeah, but, but is, your, is your friend's mom some sort of a doctor or scientist? Well, no, she just told me that she's seen vampires and stuff like that. It's, where it's, it's insane. And the, 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 <laughs> the professor, I'm assuming he's like a college professor. Whatever. Like, keeps, at some point, just starts mugging at the camera. Just like, <laughs> I look, watch, watch this question. <laughs> it's so good. It's not confirmed, but what is the reason you think it will slow down the aging process to drink? Human blood fresh from a donor. It looked like it aired on public access or something. It may have. He, at some point he mentioned something about like cable TV or something. So I wonder if it actually did. But like we're watching the movie and we're like, oh, this is this is rough. This is painful. I don't know if we made the right decision. Mm -hmm. Then the bonus feature is like, nope. Like, Best thing ever. Cherishing this forever. <laughs> the bonus feature is just, a, oh, I can't, you can't even begin to describe how I just can't even begin to describe how good it is. What do you, you say to you, prove you it, but, but you say you have reason to believe it, though. Yes. And what is the reason to believe it? Well, the reason to believe it is that um, uh, see. Well, uh, incredible. Well, Paul, I'm just gonna have to say it right now. As garbage as this movie was, that bonus feature just... Yeah, big time. So, I'm gonna give it... I'm gonna give it the double fang, just... Hey, nice. Well played. Just, just, yeah. I'm gonna go with a more traditional review, if mm -hmm. you will. Um, I enjoyed this film for all its uh, flaws. Yeah. Uh, which there's a lot. All basically, the movie is a flaw. Yeah, one hand, one finger, just straight up, just like that. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Well, thanks again for watching us talk about these movies. Uh, we appreciate it. You know, you, there's so many things that you could be doing, and you're just hanging with us. You know, it's like 11:30 at night, probably. You're just chilling and, you know, maybe you can, having a drink like we are. You could be out with your friends. Yeah. You could be playing pool in a league. You could be playing indoor soccer. You could be going to a dance. You could be driving your car to go visit your parents. You could be playing a board game with your friends. You could be watching wrestling. You could be painting a picture of the sunset that you remember from earlier in the day. You could be walking and losing some of that weight you've been wanting to lose. You could be running and doing a better job at losing some of that weight you've been wanting to lose. You could be... <laughs> I got nothing else. But you know what? You're not. You're watching my case and Paul Brooks on B-Movie Mania! <laughs> I'm kind of thinking about just watching this again right now. Would you be interested? Or could we just watch the movie?